everyone, it's Katie M. Reed from KDMReed.com. Sorry, I am a little late today. I usually come on at 1.30. Hey, Dana. Hey, hubby. I was, hey, Jen. I'm working diligently on my memoir, and I was engrossed in telling this story. And I looked at the clock. I'm like, it's 1.40. Better get on Periscope for the Monday message. Hey, Lene, welcome. Um, hey, Debbie, glad you guys are here. Um, last night, some of you heard our TV is like not working. We have like a windstorm and we just have like a big antenna because we, you know, don't pay for cable. Intentionally don't want to do that. So, I mean, there's some stations we want. Like, I really wish I could watch Fixer Upper and Hubby really likes um, Discovering History Channel, but we're saving a ton of money. But what happened was it's not working right. So then we could kind of see part of Downton Abbey, but it was all pixelated. We could only catch every couple words, and it was like worse than not being able to watch it all. So we turned it off. Instead, we worshipped. Um, I did one of the songs off my CD, Echoes of My Heart. Um, it's available on Amazon. And so thanks for joining me. Some of you were there, and it was great to see you. So, sending you some hearts today. Look, got this uh, little stationery here at the dollar bin at Target. Gotta love that. I was trying to avoid the dollar Target bin because I usually spend like $30 on stuff when I start looking, which happened this time too. Anyone else have that problem? Woo! I got a back up here. <laughs> it was cold, so I was all bundled up, but so glad you guys are here. And um, I was like thinking of things to talk to you guys about this morning, and then all of a sudden I was like, I don't know about that. But what I'm going to talk to you about today is it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, the Nestor always says that, right, about home decorating. It doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And let me tell you, writing this book. There are times when you're, I just want to like throw in the towel because it's not as beautiful as some of these other books I've read, or it's just taking forever and I want it to be just right. But if I wait till that moment, it will never get done. Can anybody relate? I mean, this can relate to anything, not just writing, but you know, cleaning your house or a relationship or like when I did my CD, like there's still some things that I still cringe. I'm like, yeah, that's a little off key or the balance is not quite right. But you know what? If I would, I could have driven myself crazy for like three years trying to get it just right and spent a ton and ton and ton of money. But instead there's a time where you gotta let it go, let it go. If you guys watch our Stop Hammock Time, I'm always trying to turn this into a musical because, you know, that's my secret dream was to be on Broadway. <laughs> but anyway, um, so whatever, are you stuck in something? Just remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can keep going. Please keep going. Don't stop because um, if you're waiting for it to be perfect, one, it never will be. And then we are missing out on what you have to offer. My friend, um, Chris is writing the Easter musical Easter play, um, for our church this year. I just, I did the Christmas one and, um, you know, I could have maybe done the Easter one, but you know, baby, baby bird is coming and it probably wouldn't have been a wise idea. Like it sounds okay now, kind of, but then as it gets closer, I know it would just be hard. So I am uh, letting go and letting my friend Chris step up and it's so cool to see what she's coming up with. But I know, you know, for her sometimes too, she wants it to be just right. And sometimes that can be so crippling and sometimes you just need to keep going forward. Have you ever spent a lot of time making like a new recipe, you know, those great Pinterest recipes, you know, you, you spend all this time, you maybe buy different ingredients and then um, it doesn't taste very good. Has that ever happened to you? And you're just like, I just spent two hours, you know, making whatever and it's not perfect. And so we're tempted to just throw it out. Now, occasionally you should throw it out. And I have a funny story about that. But sometimes you just need to eat it and like look at the positive. You know, like you accomplished something, you tried something new, and yes, it wasn't perfect, but you learned something from it. So I can't remember if we've told you the story or not, but um, when Adam and I were newly married, well, I, I've always kind of liked to cook. I mean, at least like high school and on, but I would do really weird things. Like when we would have like cream of mushroom soup. So one time I made cream of mushroom soup, like just 
the cream of mushroom, okay? And then I like made something else with the cream mushroom soup. It's really weird. But I've come a long way and I really like to do it. So here's a story. I got in this Martha Stewart cookbook and I looked in it and I didn't understand half the ingredients. I didn't know like what those things were, you know? So I tried to find a recipe. I was committed to using this cookbook that we had gotten. So I tried to find a recipe that I at least understood most of what it said. And it was called chicken tonado. Okay, so I had chicken, okay? And then I had, um, it was, you're supposed to have tuna. Now, I have been to Japan with my best friend Jennifer, and we were on a choir trip, and I have, um, we went to a sushi restaurant, and they, they were like, pick whatever. And I was like, hey. You know, we had some raw shrimp, which seemed okay. And then um, we said tuna. Well, I was seriously picturing tuna from a can. Shows how, you know, cultured <laughs> I was with eating. No, you know, a tuna filet. So anyway, um, so with, so chicken tonado. So I'm like, okay, tuna. So I was still not thinking tuna filet. I was thinking canned tuna because that's what I had. So we had, I cooked the chicken and you're supposed to marinate the chicken with like mayonnaise or something. I didn't have mayonnaise, so I used ranch, which, you know, that's not too weird. I didn't have lemon juice, so I used orange juice. Okay. I didn't have capers, which I know what they are now. So I put it on lettuce. Okay. And then I didn't have white wine. So I used the equal amount of the white wine that you're supposed to use. I used rum. Okay. Tastes like hairspray, like burning hairspray. Not that I've drank hairspray, but I'm pretty sure. So can you imagine chicken with, per, you know, the tuna and the orange juice and ranch going on on cold lettuce? Nasty. And I was like, you know, I've learned to let go a little bit, but I told Adam, because I spent so much time making this, and I said, you will eat this like a couple bites, like at least like I have slaved over this. We started eating it and I was just determined to like this. Okay. So gross. So gross. And Adam bless his heart. Not the Southern. Well, yeah, maybe the Southern way. Bless his heart. Got that Courtney, if you're watching. So he takes a couple bites and I'm taking a bites. I mean, like, this is so gross. I said, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to eat it. So we dumped it out. I think we put a frozen pizza in or went and bought it. That is an instance where it was so far from any resemblance of perfect. It just needed to be tossed out. Thankfully, I've never made something so nasty as that. But <laughs> the point is sometimes it's just a little off, you know? And I think, you know, if we're always, yes, we want to absolutely have a high standard. You know, if you are a tightly wound woman, I was talking to my friend Paula and her boss at work said, you know, she felt like she was slacking on something and he pulled her aside and he said, Paula, your slacking is everyone else's like good effort, you know, so like give yourself some grace. And I'm the same way. It's like, if I'm going to be a little, you know, lazy or half hearted about like a project, it usually means like I'm at about a, you know, 86% instead of 110, you know, or whatever. So I'm imagining that a lot of you are that way. So when I say it doesn't be perfect, I'm not saying do a half arse, lackluster job, I'm saying we got to let go of it being flawless because only Jesus alone is flawless. I almost missed out on my wonderful man because I had this list of requirements. Anyone else have their list for their husband that was so specific. I was basically looking for Jesus as long as he was a little older and taller than me, you know? And so I almost missed out because I had this list of perfection that I was holding to and absolutely don't hear me wrong. You know, let's not go crazy. Like obviously Jesus is perfection and we want to, you know, be more like him. But if we're expecting to be perfect, we are going to be perpetually disappointed and other people are going to miss out because when we um, withhold the things he's given us to offer and we're like, well, it's not perfect. So not ready. You know, there is timing, all that kind of stuff. You guys all know that, but don't hold back on what it is he's asked you to do. Work hard at it, do your best, get feedback, invite other people into the process, but there comes a time when you need to be done. So are any of you holding on to something, just wanting it to be perfect, but maybe it's time to let it go? 
So that is my challenge today, that um, don't let perfection keep you stuck so that you're being held back by being brave. You know, and sometimes too, we need to celebrate those small steps. Like the Martha Stewart chicken chow experience was awful, but you better believe I learned from that. I learned what capers were. I learned that a tuna filet is so much different than canned tuna. I definitely learned that you cannot substitute rum for white wine, at least not in equal quantities, right? And so I, you know, I became a better cook after that experience, but had I never tried because it wasn't going to be perfect, I wouldn't have learned those valuable lessons. So I hope you feel inspired and motivated today to keep going. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's make progress today. And it's going to be imperfect progress. And aren't we imperfect progress, right? Or in that, I don't know, it sounded good in my head. <laughs> so preparing for a para protest. Oh, you've got this. You've got this. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to pass it, right? <laughs> so um, let's have high standards and expectations, but let's not let this bar of perfection hit us in the head and, <laughs> and put us in the stupor, okay? So I hope you're encouraged today. I'm Katie M. Reed from katiemreed.com. Oh, yes. You know, if you if I got like a B or something, it was just like I had failed, you know. And in fact, one more quick story. My daughter just had her first swim meet. First swim meet ever. She did great. It was, she was so nervous, but you know, she wanted to get a state time on her first meet. And my husband were telling her, like, you know, when we run a race, we just want to finish the race. You know, we know we are not yet first. Maybe just our goal is we don't want to come in last, you know. And then the next race, like, maybe we could get a little better and shave a couple seconds of our time. But sometimes in our culture, we just put so much pressure on, I have to be the best or I'm a failure. And that is simply just not true. Let's celebrate the small steps along the way and celebrate progress. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great day. And Hubby and I will see you back here on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going a little later with Stop Hammock Time, so we hope you'll join us then. Talk to you later.